name of Jesus, we thank you for your people. Thank you for our leaders. And thank you for the great work you are doing through us and in us. I will pray that this work will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. Protect your people. Preserve your people. I will pray, Lord, that everything in our lives will bring glory to you in Jesus' name. Keep on using us. I will give the glory to you every time. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you very much. We can sit down. It's wonderful to be together again. We've been looking at David as well as Saul. And we've been looking at bits and pieces of the life of Saul. And so I want to go through some passages today talking about Saul. And we're starting from a memory verse. You remember the memory verse? Tell me. First Samuel chapter 23 verse okay, verse 8. And so called all the people together to war. To go down to Kela. To besiege David and his men. Think about that. Saul the king. Who was appointed and anointed to protect the nation. And now his war was against David and his men. He called all the people, and he called them together from all the tribes. We have an assignment. We have something to do. And he called them to war, not against the Philistines, not against the enemies of God. And he called them to war, not to fight a justifiable battle, but he called them to war so that they will besiege David and his men. But Saul did not start that way. Let's see how Saul began. We're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 10. 1 Samuel chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 20. It says in verse 20, And when Saul had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was taken. When he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to, uh, to come near by their families, the family of Matri was taken. And Saul, the son of Kish, was taken. And when they, uh, when they sought him, they could not, he could not be found. Therefore, they inquired of the Lord further, if the man should yet come thither. And the Lord answered, Behold, he has hid himself among the stove. And he ran and fetched him thence. And when he stood among the people, he was, tell me, higher than any of the people from his shoulders and upward. And Samuel said unto all the people, See ye him whom the Lord has chosen that there is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, God save the king. He had a towering figure above all the rest of the children of Israel. And uh, we're going to, the message tonight is the tragic life of a towering figure. The tragic life of a towering figure. How did he eventually lead his life? What happened to him eventually? And how did he fall little by little? Because as you look at this, at the life of Saul, he fell from the height of honor. And he fell to the depths of horror. Sliding slowly, little by little, he never could retrace his steps. Sliding little by little and going down, going downhill. He never recovered from the first fall. Backsliding is dangerous. Habitual backsliding may become permanent and difficult to break. Because of that, the warning of the Lord is beware. As I said, we're looking at the tragic life of a towering figure. How did it happen? What really happened to him? How did he lead his life? And what were the pitfalls? What can we learn 
There are three points we're looking at. Number one, Saul's backsliding through a little disobedience. Saul's backsliding through a little disobedience. And then point number two, sliding backward towards the lowest deterioration. It deteriorated. It went from bad to worse. And it was sliding backwards towards that point of the lowest deterioration. And then point number three, secret battles leading to a lost destiny. Secret battles leading to a lost destiny. We're coming to point number one. Tell me your number one over there. Saul's backsliding through a little disobedience. And let's see that this man actually knew the Lord. The Lord touched his heart, the Lord transformed his heart, and the Lord changed his heart. We're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 10, the very beginning of the story of this man when he met Saul. And when conversion took place, when transformation took place, when he turned around in his life took place in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 9. And it was so that when he had turned his back, to go from somewhere, God gave him another heart. God gave him another heart. That's a change of heart. It's a change of life. It's a change of spirit. I will give you a new heart. I'll take the stony heart out of your flesh and give you the heart of flesh. God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day look at verse 26 of that same chapter and Saul also went home to Gibeah and there went with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched when he was appointed king there were people that supported him but look at verse 27 and the children of Belial said shall they how shall this man save us and they despised him and brought him no presence. Tell me what follows there. But he held his peace. He wouldn't persecute anybody. He was converted. He wouldn't uh, torture anyone. He was a real child of God at that time. And he was humble. And when the people did not support him, he said, that doesn't matter. He held his peace. Some supported. Some did not support. How did he fall start? A little thing happened. And that little thing began his journey downward. In chapter 13, I'm looking at verse 8. Chapter 13, we're looking at verse 8. It says in chapter 13, verse 8, And he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgad, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, bring, bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offering. And he offered burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him. That ye might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that they came, thou, came not, thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, The Philistines will come down now upon me and to Gilgal and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself therefore and I offered a burnt offering. That's how it started. A little thing. Somebody had told him to wait for seven days and he knew he had to wait for seven days for Samuel. Why? Because Samuel actually doubled in uh, his ministry as a prophet and as a priest. And so to sacrifice before they will go to war, it will be Samuel that will do that. He was appointed as a king, not as a priest and not as a prophet. And when, if Samuel had come at the time appointed, then Samuel will offer the sacrifice and then release them, go now to the battlefield. But he waited first day, second day, third day, and fourth day, and fifth day, and sixth day. The seventh day had arrived, and Samuel had not arrived. It was a test of his faith. And a test of his loyalty. 
and he test of his obedience but he felt well the villages are here and the people are scattering and what am i going to do he said bring me a sacrifice and he offered the sacrifice immediately he finished it was at the tail end of the seventh day and now samuel said what have you done he said i had to make the sacrifice i forced myself that little disobedience that was the beginning of his fall and let's look at that uh, chapter 13 i'm reading now from uh, verse 14 it says let's go back to verse 13 it says samuel said unto saul thou hast done tell me foolishly you know impatience is foolish not waiting is foolish taking laws into our hands is foolish and laying blame on the prophet of God on Samuel, that's foolish. Forcing yourself to do what you are not supposed to do because you feel I must do it now. That little sin, you may have good intention. And you may say, this is my reason and that's my reason. And Samuel said, you have done foolishly. And then he tells us in that uh, verse 13, he says, thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now, what the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel, tell me, forever. But now, the kingdom shall, thy kingdom shall not continue. God, the Lord, had sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord had commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord had commanded thee. And then it went on uh, because from that little thing that happened there, now the Lord said, Your kingdom will not continue. This is disobedience. Even though it's a little thing, and you have waited all that long, you should have waited till the very last time. But God had not totally given up on him. Look at chapter 15. We're looking at verse 9, chapter 15. We're reading from verse 9. But Saul and the people speared Agag. And the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good. I would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refuse, they that they destroyed utterly. Then, the, then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me and has uh, not performed my commandments. And he grieved Samuel and he cried unto the Lord all the night. And eventually Samuel now to go to Saul and uh, challenge him once again, confront him once again. And let's uh, look at uh, verse, uh, verse 16. And Samuel said unto Saul, stay. And I will tell thee what the Lord has said unto me this night. And he said, say on. Look at verse 17. And Samuel said, when thou wast little in thine own sight. So, there's a time when you were little in your sight, a time you were humble, a time you were lowly, a time you were submissive, and at that time uh, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed the king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee on an errand, on a journey, and said, Go. And utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Therefore then, wherefore then, didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord. You know the story, he made an excuse. He said, we did that for a purpose. We have a goal. We have a, if the, the motive is right, even though you are thinking the action is wrong, wanted to actually sacrifice that to the Lord your God. Look at verse 22. And Samuel said, as the Lord has great delight in bond offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord behold to obey is better than sacrifice and to hacking on the fat of rams look at your life and see the little little things that happen cutting corners cutting some edges and taking some steps and going this way and going that way adding this and subtracting that 
and they we have a good intention the intention is so that uh, you know this will move and things will go on it is so that we'll be able to keep the people that's why we cut those corners and it says in verse 23 for rebellion is at the scene of witchcraft and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the lord tell me the rest he also has rejected thee from being king that's why it started little little things that happened in his life and those little things eventually generated into uh, the big uh, cesspool of sin and iniquity we eventually find we're coming now to chapter 22 and see what eventually happened to this man uh, no more little little things anymore uh, because uh, little drops of water make a mighty ocean in chapter 22 of 1 samuel verse 9 uh, then answered Doeg the Edomite, which was set over the servants of Saul. Hold on, hold on. If Edomite, Doeg, and Edomite coming from Edom, that's another nation. That's a foreign nation. That's an enemy nation that belongs to the territory of Esau. And Esau was an avowed enemy of Jacob until Esau died. And the Edomites were avowed enemies of uh, Israel all through their generations. Even if you read Obadiah and read the latter part of the Old Testament, they were enemies of the children of Israel. And he chose somebody from there to be the captain of the army that he raised up. And then it says, uh, uh, he don't, he, this book said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob. Uh, you understand that language? Not, not that I saw David. He wanted to mention his name. He hated that name. It was a despicable thing. And then he, he said, I saw the son of Jesse, son of Jesse, coming over there and uh, to Nob. And Ahimelech, uh, the son, he came to Ahimelech, goes to Ahitop. And then it goes on, and eventually, you see what he did. We're looking at, uh, verse, uh, at verse 18. And the king, the Saul, said to Doeg, Turn thou and fall upon the priest. What do you think he'll do? Of course, of course, an Edomite. Of course, coming from Edom. Of course, an avowed enemy of the children of Israel. They hated Israel. They hated the priesthood. They hated the ministry of the prophet. And they hated everything, the plan of God in Israel. That's what he will do. And he's the kind of person that Saul eventually chose from a little fall, a little disobedience, a little disloyalty, and a little going, as a little deviation. Now he's come to a terrible sin. And it says, and Doug the Edomite turned, and he fell upon the priests and slew on that day, first call and five persons that uh, did wear a leaning effort. And, and now the city of the priest smote he with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and suckling, oxen and asses, and dish and sheep with the edge of the sword. Go destroy the Amalekites, the enemies. No, he won't do that. But now the priests of the Lord, he wiped out every one of them. Let's come to chapter 23, the chapter we're looking at today. In chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 14. Chapter 23, verse 14. And David abode in the wilderness, uh, in strongholds, and remained in the mountain of the wilderness of Sea. And so sought him Tell me, every day. Saul sought him every day. But he was appointed to be on the throne. No, he's not sitting on the throne. He was appointed to defend the nation of Israel. No, he's not doing that. He was appointed to fight the battles of the Lord. No, he had no time to do that. He was appointed to take care of his own family, of his own life, and of the nation. Even of his tribe, the Benjamites, no time to do that. The only, everything he was planning is just to get rid of one man. Get rid of one. And this man was not a threat to his kingdom. This man would not touch him. But the full-time job of this person now was just to be after David. And it says, and so sought him every day. But God did not. 
But God delivered him not unto his hand. Look up for a moment. If, if you do something a day, a week, a month, and there's no success, I think you'll sit back. I think you'll think, uh, well, I'm trying this, I'm doing this, and there's no success. Shouldn't I change? Shouldn't I think about my life and think about my future? But you know, there are people like that. They do something for one month. They do it for three months. They do it for one year, and the thing is not succeeding. And they should have recollected that God said, through Samuel, he has sought for another person. He has appointed that person. So, don't you understand who God is? Don't you know that if he has appointed somebody, no matter how you try, you will fail? How does a man keep on knocking his head against the wall? He is the one having headache, and the wall is still standing there, and still is foolish enough to keep on knocking his head upon the wall. If you're on a project, and this project, you know, this is not of God. You're seeking this man, you're running after this man, and the Lord is always protecting him, always protecting serving him and the more you try to destroy him the more he's developing and the more he's going stronger and the more he's doing well and you still keep on that's what backsliding does it blindfolds people it deadens their conscience it deadens, it deadens their uh, thinking faculty that they will not know what to do we're talking about a soul it's it's a great fall started with a little failure a little fall a little disobedience watch against that little temptation because it may lead to a catastrophe eventually the bible talks of little things number one little foxes number two little filthiness number three little folly foolishness number four little fire number five just little food then little unfaithfulness little fornication number one little foxes because the way this man started it wasn't a major sin that caused his fall it wasn't a major sin that destroyed him just a little sin just a little sin in uh, the songs of solomon i'm reading from chapter 2 verse 15 songs of solomon chapter 2 and we're looking at verse 15 it says in verse 15 take us the foxes the little foxes that spoil the vine for our vines have tender grapes. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. And my father is the Osman man. And we have tender grapes. The grapes are the fruits of the spirit. A little temptation, a little, a kind of, a little fox can destroy everything. And look at the position that God gave the soul, a king. And he towered above everybody. What a privilege and what a position, what power the Lord gave him. And what possibilities that the kingdom could have continued forever from generation to generation. He lost everything because of that little thing. Be careful, beware, watch. A little, the little foxes, little filthiness. I'm looking at um, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 1. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. Uh, that word apothecary there, that's a pharmaceutical word. It's talking about uh, when those uh, pharmacists mix all those uh, things uh, to treat uh, somebody that will become medicine. And the uh, little fly will spoil everything. And it's telling us here, little filthiness, flies are dirty, flies are dirty, a little filthy language. A little filthy appearance. A little filthy relationship with the opposite sex. A little filthy allowance you give yourself. This is not too bad. This is not the real thing. This is not a real sin. And this is not a real immorality. Just a little filthiness is going to spoil that ministry. It will destroy the anointing. The anointing. Because it's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. A little, a little fox and a little filthiness. A little folly. A little filthiness. Look at that. The second part of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 1. And it says, um, it says, so does a little folly. Him that is in reputation for wisdom and 
honor and then there's a little fire you know this in james chapter 3 james chapter 3 and here we're looking at verse 5 james chapter 3 verse 5 in james chapter 3 verse 5 it, it tells us over here it says even so even so the tongue is a little member and boasted great things behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth a little fire kindleth you remember leviticus chapter 10 in leviticus chapter 10 from verses 1 to 3 two sons of aaron they took fire strange fire in their censer and then they went before the lord just for a moment of time and just just little fire but a strange fire how many people in trying to be very effective as prayer warriors in trying to be very effective as intercessors in trying to be very effective as people that can solve problems they go to the other side of the fence and what the people are digging up from their past or cultic involvements. Some of those people that have written those books of prayer, they were in a secret cult before. They were in secret society before. They were into magic before. They were into occultism. They were into idolatry before. And now that they say that they have become Christians, they, they don't follow the Bible. They just say, write him. They put a verse of scripture and then they dig up all the things they knew and all the things they learned in the secret great cult in the you know pass of darkness and you are a believer you are a child of god and uh, the lord wants your life to be played look at the apostles the apostles neither silver and gold have i none in the name of jesus christ rise up and walk peter did not have to go and dig up any kind of idea and any kind of information from the dark powers or anywhere and look at uh, paul the apostle was preaching acts chapter 14 and he saw that that man that he had faith and he said rise up on your feet and rose up on the feet and they didn't have to go and dig up anything territorial spirit a bush spirit familiar spirit how the witches behave and all their actions of that strength fire and you see these uh, neither but a bible you see how god just destroyed them because of that little fire look at paul and silas they sang praises unto god and then the prison doors were shaking the foundations were shaking and they were told that all their hands were loosed and they were totally free and there wasn't any kind of secret gimmick that anybody you know played it's just the plain thing and there are people they're looking for power they're looking for effectiveness and they're looking for you know if i have this and then they go they may not go to their convention or their camp or whatever but they buy their books and they hide all those books and when they say now we're going to pray and tonight is going to be a great time of prayer and night vigil and they sleep that book or booklet under their bible and while the people are closing their eyes they're reading from that thing they say we'll break down this thing we'll do jericho something and these walls will fall today and they read out of that thing that those occultic people who say they are converted what they read a strange fire and you bring that here and the people are jumping then you see somebody there because tonight is uh, you know prayer warrior night and they will match here match there much here why are you doing that this is not jericho are you jericho i said are you jericho people no this is the house of god did you see that in jesus christ he just came to the grave of lazarus and said father I know that you always hear me but because of these people eh, there was no gyration there was no spinning and there was no magic nothing it's just the name the power in the name of jesus i know you always hear me but because of these people that's what i'm saying what i'm saying and then after i said lazarus tell me lazarus. come forth did he come forth yeah. of course of course and it says whatever you desire when you pray not when you gyrate not when you shake your head not when you are boxing the air not when you run out you know you see these people here we are we're praying they run out of this hall there out of that door then they come that way and they come this way and they run in here they run to the platform they run over here and then they keep their eyes open and they're going like this they're going like this and you're watching say so what's, what's wrong with this man what's he doing he's praying that's a prayer warrior effective man that's strange fire and what's happening the blinders are not opening 
the lame, they are not walking. And the people that came last week, I had this, I had this, they come this week again, and then you pray for them again. And the people that had that challenge, that time, they still come, nothing is happening. But it is just this strange fire. And the people, they're looking for, but go back to the Bible. Understand that you take the shield of faith, which shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Because whatsoever the word is your mouth, behold, I give unto you power over the power of the enemy, and you'll tread on serpents and scorpions, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing will hurt you. You know, there's some people, they carry bottles of water about. And then you say, what are you doing with that? Holy water in that plastic bottle. Uh -uh. And then other people, it's oil. You hear me? It's not oil. Oil. That they carry about. And then we say, what is that one? Strange fire, throw it away. There's power in the Holy Ghost. He shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses so both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria to the uttermost part of the earth. Power has come. Amen. The power is in the name of Jesus. I said it's in the name of Jesus. And you know what has been happening, and more are going to happen. Amen. And it will happen through you. Amen. We'll drop all the silver because you see, there are little foxes. Then you see, there is a little uh, filthiness, and there is little folly, foolishness. There's little fire, there's a little food, little food. You know, sometimes the food can be the problem. You know the story. And we're looking at, um, we're looking at Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, I'm looking at verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one muscle of meat sold is birthright one muscle of meat one muscle of meat why are we emphasizing that if you eat two times a day and then there are 365 days in the year then you eat how many how many times 365 times two that's um, 730 one meal when you have eaten all the others more than 700, what does one meal mean? That will not kill you. A little food. Did you see that man that ran away from the battlefield? And then ran to this place and jailed the, the woman saw her. And, and saw him and said, please, they are chasing me. Let me hide here. He says, hide here. Can you give me some water to drink? Water? I'll give you milk. And give, her, give him a milk to drink. It's just a little food. Keep on running. Keep on running. Go where you are going. Don't stay there. And then eventually the man slept. Stay at the door there. If they ask of me, say, there's nobody here. Okay. I hear you and when he was fast asleep the same person that gave her meal to drink just a little food went and took the nail of the tent and smote his head everything he was dead you do see that false pro that prophet the young prophet he came to the land first kings chapter 13 and then eventually the king said come home with me and was, i cannot drink here not no water no food because the lord had told me don't eat there don't drink there and he, you know he took his turn i pray you'll take your stand then the false prophet heard and said uh-uh why is it like that? Be sociable now. I'm also a prophet like you are. Come back, come home and eat with me. I cannot do it because the Lord said I must not. I'm a prophet like you are. An angel spoke to me just now and said come and eat. And then because of that lie, you will not believe a lie. Amen. He went back. It was only one meal. One meal. A little food. And then he died. I will not die over one meal. Even if you are going to fast until you die, I think it's worth it. Rather than little foxes, 
rather than little filthiness, rather than little foolishness, rather than little fire, rather than little food, or little unfaithfulness. Unfaithfulness in little sin. In Luke chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 10. Luke chapter 16, and we're looking at uh, verse 10. Here the Lord Jesus Christ emphasized, and he said, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in that which is least is also unjust in much. In that which is least, there are some people they say, Well, that's a big thing, I'll do it well. That's a major thing, I'll do it well. But this is a little thing, that little unfaithfulness. It's very costly, and it can mean the ruin of your Christian life. A little leaven, a little leaven. Let's look at this in First Corinthians chapter, First Corinthians chapter five. First Corinthians chapter five, and we're looking at verse six. It says, "Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lamb?" He was talking about fornication actually here, because uh, this uh, fellow had taken the father's uh, the father's why and uh, people will say you know what does that mean all these say uh, let's leave all these little little things say look that's their family problem that's their private problem that's their you let them look into that don't bother the church or that that's what some people thought and Paul the apostle said by the spirit it's a little leaven a little fornication in the congregation that you're overlooking and it says purge out in verse 7 therefore the old leaven that we may be a new love as ye are on leaven for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us therefore let us keep the feast with not with the old leaven neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether the fornicators of this world, or with uh, the covetous and extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must he need to go out of the world. What Paul the Apostle is saying right there is, there are fornicators in your offices, you still have to work in the office, in the market, you still have to do something in the market, and in the community, you still have to relate with them, but when it comes to the church, look at verse 14, but now I, I have reaching unto you not to keep company if any man any man any man be a funny could be, uh, be called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner was such a one tell me not to eat not to eat not even to have you know the socializing that normally do it says what have i to do you to judge them also that are without do not ye judge them that are within but them that are without God judge therefore put away from among you among yourselves that wicked person and so we understand what brought the fall the great fall of Saul it was a little deviation a little disobedience a little disloyalty a little sin God will judge. A little corruption, God will judge. A little fraud, a little fraud. You know, you normally, you, you don't take part in that or then. But this particular time, no money to pay the school fees of your children. And there's no money for the house rent. And even the food store, every, there's no money. And our fraud is taking place and it's easy. It's easy. And they tell you in the office, they say, uh, you know, you don't understand the ways of, uh, you know, of the world because you have been holy, holy person. But, you know, if you want to get involved, it's not very difficult. All you do is this, this, this. And, uh, you know, within a week, something will come out. At least you'll have your share. Even if it's 100,000 naira, or maybe you might share even get out of 500 if we make a good deal out of this and because of the condition in which you are and because you know i need to pay this i need to pay that and god you understand i will repent later huh? how do you know you repent later you might die before you have a chance to repent and because of that little fraud then you are gone i pray it will not happen to you
a little rebellion, a little rebellion. You know, you normally you are obedient and you are loyal and you know you follow up and you are submissive. But just this one, just this one time, I think I'm, you know I need to take a stand at this time. I should not be dumb or be sheepish every time. I think I need to be bold at this time. At least I will try. Other people are doing it. Other people are being rebellious and nothing is happening to them. At least I'll try my own at this time. A little rebellion. You might lose something you know, that you never thought you'd lose. Lifetime ministry. And a great thing. And the thing you have fasted for. And the thing you have labored for. And the thing you have endured for. And the thing where God is going to say, that's my man there. That's my daughter there. Get that done. You might lose that thing. That little rebellion. A little deviation from sound doctrine. Beware. No one can predict the end of a little lasciviousness. I'm coming to point number two. Point number two, sliding backwards towards the lowest deterioration. We're coming back to First Samuel. And we're looking at chapter 23. First Samuel chapter 23. And we're reading from verse 7 to verse 8. First Samuel chapter 23, looking at verse 7, and it, uh, and it was told Saul that David was come to Caleb, and Saul said, God has delivered him into mine hand. Did you hear that? I said, did you hear that? Was that God? Did God deliver David into his hand? How do people tell lies and believe a lie? That's a lie. He knew that David was going to reign over the land of Israel. He knew God had appointed him. And let me show you. Look at chapter 24. In chapter 24, I'm reading here from verse, uh, I'm reading from verse um, 16. And it came to pass when David had made an end of speaking this words that Saul, unto Saul, that Saul said, Is that thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and tell me and wept. And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. And thou hast showed this day how that thou hast dealt well with me for as much as when the Lord delivered. Tell me. Is the, Lord, the Lord was delivering Saul into his hand. Uh, sorry, yes, Saul into David's hand. The Lord delivered me into thine hand, thou kills me not. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore the Lord reward thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day. Your enemies will pray for you. Amen. Jesus is praying for you. Amen. I am praying for you. The church is praying for you. And then your enemies now, they turn around. They say, you know, we, have just, we know we are deceiving ourselves. We thought we could hurt you. Now they will turn around and they will reverse all the curses they put on you before. And they will pray for you in Jesus' name. I see victorious people in the house. Conquerous people in the house. I see people that your enemies will come before you and say, I know that you are higher than I, greater than I, and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Don't drop your head, look up, because you are more than a conqueror. Look at, look at verse 20, and now behold, who is talking here? I said who is talking here? Who is he talking to? He says, behold, now I know, tell me, I know well, this one there's no shadow of doubt. I know well that thou shalt tell me, surely be king, and that thy kingdom, the kingdom of Israel, shall be established in thy hand. Established in thy hand. If he knew that, if he knew that, I'll come back to chapter 23, and we're looking at verse 7, and it was told Saul that David was come to Caleb. And uh, that uh, Saul and Saul said, God has delivered him into my hand, for he is shot him. 
by entering into a town that has gates and bars and then it says and Saul called all the people together to war to go down to Cana to beseech David and his men he had slid him back to the point he was now at the point of the lowest deterioration and do you see that what they are besieged that means to surround somebody with, with armed forces and to attack from all sides and he said he came to war now to war against David not against the Philistines not against the enemies of Israel not against sin not against the flesh not against the world not against the enemy of his own soul but against God's will against God's anointed against the appointment of the almighty God how could a man be like that I pray you'll not be like that now this downward trend of soul slippery to perdition what were the steps that took place number one repeated perpetual backsliding repeated perpetual backsliding you find it started in first samuel chapter 13 and then backsliding repeated again in chapter 15 and on and on and on that's how it starts repeated perpetual backsliding number two deliberate rejection of god's word i just read it to you in chapter 24 in chapter 24 it says i know well that God will surely grant you the kingdom all over Israel. And yet in chapter 26, he followed after that man again, wanting to still persecute him and kill him because he rejected God's word and God's will. Number three, love for deceit and, and falsehood love for deceit and falsehood look at chapter 24 and we're looking at verse 9 chapter 24 verse 9 it says and uh, david david said to saul wherefore hearest thou man's words saying behold david seeketh thy heart that was false that was deception he deceived himself he had what he wanted to hear what he wanted to know that's what he heard and people told him david is seeking after you and david wants to destroy you and david wants to hurt you and david said why are you listening to that i found you and somebody said i should just knock it just once mighty and then you are gone but look at your clothes that i caught because i will not touch you he chose to believe a lie you see, when you repeat something false to yourself over and over and over, eventually you believe it, it was terrible for him. Number four, love for deceit. Okay, number three, love for deceit and falsehood. Number four, denial of God's anointed. Denial of God's anointed. He told uh, his son, uh, Jonathan, he said, foolish boy of a perverted woman as long as david is alive you will not reign but jonathan knew that he was not occupying the throne and so jonathan told david my father knows very well that you are going to be the king i'll be next to you i know it my father knows it but my father chose to deny god's anointed you know that's what happens to people they deny the anointing of the lord number five pursuing the plans of satan pursuing the plans of satan who wants the prophets dead satan who wants the priest dead satan and so what he did in first samuel chapter 22 verses 11 to 19 uh, that was the plan of satan that was carrying at when he told doeg kill all those the uh, priests of the lord pursuing the plans of satan number six corrupting god's people corrupting uh, god's people he so brainwashed the people that the people now came to his side and the people of seeds they called him they said david is here he's hiding in a place around here come it wants to come will deliver him to your hand even the people of Caleb, 
that uh, you know David has saved and protected David went to pray I hear that Saul is coming well the people deliver me to their hands God said they will deliver you to his hands because those people they have been corrupted by Saul the Lord wants you to be a cleansing agent to the people a converting agent to the people a person that will help people to come out of their defilement and corruption and come to the cleansing of the Lord but you're yielding yourself to defile the people that you ought to take to heaven and so had been appointed by God for over these people to make them obey the word of the Lord and to make them accept the will of the Lord and to take them to heaven he turned around he corrupted them number seven overthrowing the faith and the faithful overthrowing the faith and the faithful uh, look at uh, you know this uh, Ahimelech I know nothing about this my lord the king is not David one of your trusted men is he not the one that is fighting the battle of who is more faithful than David among your servants did I just give him what I gave him you will die for that thing that you have done and then the face of that man of course he had his foolishness too and the simplicity and innocence of that man he overlooked everything and he wiped out even the people that were not involved with that kind of uh, thing that was accusing Ahimelech of everybody died the death now I've gone through for Saul let's now think about ourselves how do people go now go down go down until the deteriorate to the point of no return number one repeated perpetual backsliding still the same thing but uh, we're now going away from Saul and we're coming to ourselves we're looking at uh, Jeremiah chapter 8 Jeremiah chapter 8 and I'm reading from verse 4 Jeremiah chapter 8 we're looking at verse 4 in Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 4 it says moreover thou shalt say unto them thus says the Lord shall they fall and not arise shall he shall he turn away and not return why then is this people of Jerusalem leading back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast the siege and they return and they refuse to return. Perpetual backsliding. When somebody has backsliding and the mercy of God is calling and the voice of God is calling and the love of God is calling and he says, No, I'll stand my ground. I've decided that and that's what I'm going to do. I'll not go back there to say sorry to the almighty God or to say sorry to heaven or to say sorry to the church. Never. Whatever will happen, I'm taking that decision. I will keep my honor. I will keep my name. I will keep my decision. Perpetual, perpetual backsliding. Look at Hosea chapter 11 verse 7. Hosea chapter 11 verse 7. Uh, that's the problem that people have when they backslide. And then the entreaties are coming and the pleadings are coming. But they refuse to return. In Hosea chapter 11 verse 7. And my people are bent to backsliding from me. Though they called them to the most high, none at all would exalt him. Perpetual backsliding. Number two, deliberate rejection of God's word. They know it's God's word, but deliberately they reject that God's word. Oh, what's the hope for the person? What's the hope for a backslider that hears the word of God and he says, Yes, I know that. I know it's rich in the word. I know that's what God is saying. I know that's sound doctrine. But I've made up my mind that this is what I'm going to do. Hey, my friend, you call yourself a believer. That person is a non-believer. Be not unequally yoked together with a non-believer. Sir, I can tell you where that verse is in the Bible. I can tell you the meaning. I know what you say. But I've gone too far. I love this person. My heart is there. And there's no way I can return. I know the word of God you are quoting. I know what you're saying. 
but I've made up my mind. That's what I'm going to do. Jeremiah chapter 44. In Jeremiah chapter 44, I'm reading from verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 44. We're looking at verse 16. It says, As for the word that thou was spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. We know it's the word of the Lord, but we've made up our minds, it's unfortunate. If you want to do your preaching, go and you do your preaching in another place and go and talk to other people. As to what you have said, we know it's the word of the Lord, but we will not hack in unto you. Look at the first part of verse 17, but we will certainly do whatsoever sin goeth forth out of our mouth. Number three, love for deceit and false doctrine. Love for deceit and false doctrine. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 31. Jeremiah chapter 5. Verse 31, the people that they know it's false, they know it's not true, they know this is false doctrine, they know this is erroneous. You know what? They decided, one reason or the other, something happened, I will not stay in deeper life. What have we done, sir? I know, I know your heart, you love us, you want us to stay, you want people to be holy, to get to heaven, but sir, don't, don't bother about me. A bit of my mind, I will not stay in deeper life. Where are you going? And then they go to a particular place. As they go there, they see the error. They see the falsehood. They say, that's not right. Every time somebody is preaching there, they say, he didn't quote that right. He didn't interpret that right. Come out now. Uh-uh. I've made up my mind. As for that place, I will not go back there. As for this place, I know things that are wrong there. I can teach the people who are teaching here. I can correct the people who are doing something wrong here. But I will stay here. They love the false doctrine. Eventually, Jeremiah chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 31. Jeremiah chapter 5. We're looking at verse 31. The prophets prophesy falsely. And the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. My people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? When the destruction comes, when the judgment comes, what are you going to do? Because they love that error. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. In Second Thessalonians chapter 2, here we're looking at it from verse 10. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 10. It says in verse 10, And was all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe what? Believe a lie. Believe a lie. If God has protected you until this day, praise the name of the Lord. He'll keep on protecting you. I said he'll keep on protecting you. Because you are precious in his sight. There are many people who believe this same truth with us before, but now they've gone into a lie. And they originally, when it first came to them, there was the alarm clock ringing in their heart. That's false, that's false, that's false. But eventually now they sit down there. And it says in verse 12, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. It will not happen to you. And then denying Christ's atonement. Denying Christ's atonement. We're looking at a second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two. We're reading from verse one. Second Peter chapter two, verse one. It says, And there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them the atonement the blood of jesus the cleansing and the lamp of god that takes away the sins of the world they deny the lord that bought them they were saved before and bring upon themselves swift destruction look at verse 20 for each for it and for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world they were saved before 
They were born again before. If after they had escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord as and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. It will not happen to you. Number five, preaching the doctrines of demons. In the case of Saul, he was pursuing the plan of Satan. And now there are people that now they preach the doctrines of demons. First Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 and 2. First Timothy chapter 4. And we're reading here from verses 1 and 2. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Tell me the rest. And doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, and having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And then they come to corrupting the people of God. Corrupting the people of God. It's not only that they are backsliding. It's not only that they are defiled. It's not only that they are now corrupt or corrupted. But they now go on to corrupt the people of God. Ezekiel chapter 44 verse 12. Ezekiel chapter 44 and verse 12. Because they ministered unto them before their idols. And caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. They caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. There are people that, uh, you know, they, they will be giving wrong counseling. A kind of counseling that will lead a young man into fornication. A kind of counseling that will open the door for a married woman who calls herself a Christian to go into immorality and adultery. A kind of counseling that will corrupt people, destroy people, defile people. They'll say, well, I, 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 wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't know to tell you this, but you know, um, your husband is gone, you are now a widow. And you need to take care of yourself. And it is uh, this man, the old man friend, the old sin partner. And he's uh, showing interest. Well, but he has married. Well, that's what I'm telling you. If you, you want to die of hunger, if you don't want to die of hunger, then this man is showing interest in you. And uh, it was your old uh, sin partner. You are living alone by yourself. You are a widow. What are you going to do? Well, I'll not put uh, words in your mouth, but think about what to do. But... Um, if I were you, I would not die of hunger. Whoever wants to help me, although you are not saying directly, you know what you are telling them? Go submit yourself to him. He's interested in you. And he will feed you. And he will help you. And then when you do that, you are corrupting the people of God. You are a backslider yourself. And you are causing other people to backslide because of their tummy, because of their eating, because of food. Look at this. Because they ministered unto them before their idols and caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. Therefore have I lifted up my hand against them, says the Lord God, and they shall bear their iniquity. Malachi chapter 2. In Malachi chapter 2, we're looking at verse 6. Malachi chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 6. In verse 6, it says, the law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his leaves. He walked with me in peace and equity, and did turn many from iniquity. For the priest's leaves should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is a messenger of the Lord. Look at verse 8. But... But ye have departed out of the way. Ye have caused, tell me, many to stumble at the law. Tell me the rest now. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. Number seven, overthrowing the faith of others, overthrowing the faithful. Overthrowing the faith of the faithful. In 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 19. Holding faith and a good conscience. Which some 
having put away concerning the faith of made a shipwreck of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander whom I have delivered unto Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme you see what the Lord is telling us about his soul he slid back he went back sliding on a slippery slope until he got to the lowest point in deterioration I pray it will not happen to you. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. We're looking at point number three now. A secret battles leading to a lost destiny. Secret battles leading to a lost destiny. You know what? There are people that uh, do things and uh, they think that they can cover because they do it in secret. In secret. And uh, they do it in secret uh, means that they feel that nobody will know this and they, they hide their intention, they hide their motive. That's exactly the pattern of life of Saul. Secret, secret, secret battles eventually led him to a lost destiny. Let's look at the a passage of today in First uh, Samuel chapter 23. For Samuel chapter 23 and I'm looking at verse 9. For Samuel chapter 23 verse 9 and David knew that Saul what's the next word there? Secretly practice mischief against him. Secretly. Secretly practice mischief against him. He hid his intention. He hid his plan. He hid his strategy. He healed everything that he had in mind. And secretly, secretly, he planned mischief. That wasn't the first time he'll go into secret to plan his conspiracy. And let's look at 1 uh, Samuel chapter 18. 1 Samuel chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 21. Secret, 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 secret. Nobody will know this. And you'll do this, and you know, people will pass it by as secret if you know he has uh, you know he's a good leader he's a wonderful leader he's higher than everybody he's knowledgeable he's this and that because he does everything he does secretly that you will not know in uh, first samuel chapter 18 verse 21 in verse 21 it says uh, and saul said i will give him a hand that she may be as near to him and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. That was his intention. Wherefore Saul said to David, Thou shalt this day be my son-in-law in the one of the twain. Look at the interpretation. Look at it in verse 22. And Saul commanded a servant saying, Commune with David. Tell me the word. Secretly. Secretly secretly go and convince him because this is a way we can kill him we can destroy him this is a conspiracy but it was secret commune with david secretly and say behold the king has delight in thee and all the servants love thee now therefore be the king's son in law we are looking at some ten in Psalm 10, we're looking at, uh, you know, the, the prayer of David as now he prayed. And he tells us uh, actually what was going on in the secret. In Psalm 10, we're looking at verse 4. In Psalm, 4, Psalm 10, verse 4, the wicked through pride of his countenance will not seek God. God is not in all his thoughts. So, God is not in all his thoughts. All those uh, secrets, uh, secret people cons uh, conspiring, God is not in all their thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for his enemies, he perfect at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Look at verse 8 now. He seated in the locking places of the villages, in the secret places. Does he murder the innocent? His eyes are privily set against the poor. And that's their lifestyle. That's what they do. But God will get them. Look at verse the chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 28. 
secret secret that that's, that's how he lived his life everything he did and uh, there is uh, one now that was getting to a final stage in his life secret in uh, first samuel chapter 28 i'm reading here from verse 3 it says that uh, now samuel was dead and all israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city and saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land and uh, the, the, the the philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched his shunem and saul gathered all israel together and they preached in gibber and uh, when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, inquired of the Lord, at this time now, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreamer, nor by Urim, nor by prophet. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that has what? A familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her and the servant said unto him behold there's a woman that has a familiar spirit at endom and saul and saul secret 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 yes he, he has perfected the um, science the art of secrecy disguised himself you know if you're like that you'll kill yourself if you're like that, you'll go to hell because you don't want people to know what you're doing. And you're perfecting that art. You're perfecting that way of, uh, you know, doing whatever it is. And nobody will detect because you know about secrecy. That's what ruined that man. That's what ruined him. Because he'd been practicing that secret, 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 and nobody will know. And now it says, and Saul disguised himself and put on all that remit, and he went, and two men with him. And he came to the woman by oh no they won't go by day that, that will not be secret enough they went by night and then it goes on to say and he said i pray they divine unto me by the familiar spirit and bring him up whom i shall name unto thee let's come to um first chronicles chapter 10 first chronicles chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 13 first chronicles chapter 10 verse 13 it says and saul Open your Bible. I'm waiting for you. Where are we reading? First Chronicles chapter what? And verse what? Are you there now? If you are there, read it out. Let me hear you. One, two, three, go. Okay, okay. You are there. Good, good people. The Lord will bless you. So Saul died for his transgression which he committed against the Lord, even against the watch of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it, and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore he slew him and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. Did he go to heaven? He died under that penalty of going to the witch doctor but you know if people will not come to live in the open the christian life is a life in the light let your light so shine therefore before men that people may see your good works come out in the open let's see what are you hiding what are you protecting or are you living a secret life, a secretive life, that nobody will know what you're doing, nobody will be able to correct you, and then you die in sin? What's the use? What's the profit? If you die in sin, and then you go to hell, how many years? Forever and ever. Be careful. Because secret idolatry, or secret hatred, or secret compromise, or secret fraud, or secret corruption, or secret adultery, secret of faithfulness and deception, secret hidden sin, God will judge. Today is the day of God's cleansing and God's mercy. Don't wait until the final day. 
come out of the company of Saul and come to the Lord's side. And the Lord is saying, if you will call upon him, all those secret, secret things, let the Lord cleanse them and be totally free. And then from today, you'll not be sliding back and sliding down and sliding to hell. The Lord will rescue every one of us today in Jesus' name. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us now hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man for god shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil judgment is coming but mercy is available today let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer that the lord will rescue us the Lord will transform us and the Lord will not allow all these little, little termites and all these little, little foolies, all these little, little foxes to destroy us. The Lord died for you, died for me on the cross of Calvary. Heaven is yours. There's a place in heaven for you. You will not miss it in Jesus' name.